Okay, so in this recording I'm going to be going over how to use the Linux terminal. And it's not something you should be afraid of. It's something that's very easy. To find the terminal you go in here and in the search bar you can type in terminal and it should figure out what you want. I have two installed. I have the Deepin terminal installed and I have the console terminal installed. The other way you can get it is if you hit alt and f2 on your keyboard and type in terminal. It'll link to one of your terminals and that will open the terminal. But the easiest way by far to do it is actually just hit Control alt t and that will automatically open up your terminal. Now let's get into console commands. Console commands are actually really easy if I want to open an app. So if you type in the name of an application, you will get that application. So if I type in LMMS, it will start LMMS. How convenient is that, right? The app, it should return you but the thing is, any app you open in the console, if you close out of the console, it will give you this warning that says there's a process running. If you close this window, it will close all of the application. So let's open back up the terminal and remember that command was Control alt t So now we're back into the terminal and let's run some commands. So if I want to open Dolphin, I can open up my file explorer and have some videos here. If I wanted to open up any app, all you have to do is type in the name of the app as we've seen with the past two examples. Let's say we're trying to find a file on our computer. So to find a file, you hit LS. It should give you what's in the folder you're currently in. I'm just in my home folder here. Uh, but as you can see, there is a bunch of files in here. So if I wanted to open up, but if you hit Control shift c you can copy and Control shift v will paste. So I want to open this with VLC, so I'm going to type VLC and then the name of the file I want to open with VLC. And okay, so in this recording, that's how it works. It just opens whatever you want with uh, when you put in the second command, okay? So, I don't know what all these errors are. This doesn't usually happen, so... Maybe I'm missing some codecs or something. Anyway, so, so far, we have learned how to open an app. We have learned how to list directories and list files that we have in, on our computer, and we have learned to open those files on our computer with specific apps, right? So that's three things. That's three different things. So here's a very handy command. Now there's a bunch of crud all in my terminal that I don't need to see because I'm no longer using those apps. So what you can do if you don't need this information is just type clear, clear, and now my console is clear, right? If you hit the up arrow on your keyboard, you can go through all of the commands that you have recently input. So if I wanted to do this VLC thing again, all I have to do is hit up twice and it opens VLC okay. again. Okay. Right? So let's clear that again. So that's a total of five commands we've already learned how to do. This is easy. This is going to be easy. And the next thing on our system is to look in a different directory. So uh, ls. Uh, let's say I wanted to go into my downloads folder. So if I wanted to go to my downloads folder, I have to type cd space downloads. Now the thing about this is that this is, will only change to the directory if you're already in there. So the thing you have to do is you have to move your cursor all the way back. So use the right arrow to go all the way back and type in tilde slash. This key depends on what your keyboard layout is, but for me it's right above the tab key and right next to the number one key on the left hand side. Type in a forward slash and it's important because Unix and Linux systems use forward slash whereas Windows uses backslashes. So type in tilde forward slash downloads and we can go look in my downloads folder. So now we're in the downloads folder. You see here? Now this is displaying where we are. I type in ls, oops, sorry, not lsd. <laughs> Woo, we're going trippy now. ls. And we get what I have in my downloads. And I have Zoom, the Debian version of Zoom, and an exe file. Now I can't use either of those because obviously Zoom is already installed and Visual Studio Enterprise is not something you can correctly or accurately run on Linux. 
but now we can learn to move out of folders. So like, let's say you're in your downloads folder and I want to go back to my home folder. So what you do is type in cd space dot dot and that will take you up one folder. Okay? And I can go anywhere on my system with this. So if I go cd root uh, uh, use our forward slash share and I type in ls and I can look at everything in the user share folder. Now there's a lot of stuff in here you don't need to know what any of this is. But if I just want to get back to my home folder, if you hit cd tilde, it will just take you right back to your home folder. So we got out of this mess, and we're now back in just our home folder. So to give you an example of what this is doing alongside, I'm going to show you how exactly you're doing this. So I'm going to move all of these video files into my video folder, right? So this is my file explorer window, right? There's not a lot of stuff here. I can see more stuff if I hit control A. And that's the equivalent of typing in ls-a. And that will show you all of these files, these hidden files. Because before when we hit ls, all we could see was this stuff, right? But if we want to see, now we can see the hidden files, which is anything with a dot in front of it, it's a hidden file. If we want to see everything, we type in ls-a, which stands for list up systems all. And that will give you everything you need to see. We don't want to see any of that for right now, so let's just close that up and let's clear the, the terminal. And now we're back in here. So again, if I want to see what's in my documents folder in the file manager, all I would do is double click, right? So in console, all I have to do is cd and type in documents and hit enter. And that takes you to the documents folder. And if I type ls, I can see the two folder names that I have here. See, lmms source code, lmms source code, same thing. That's all that it's doing. Now let's open up something else and do something a little bit more advanced. Let's download and install a software. So we can open Discover and I'll show you, I will show you exactly what this is doing. So typically the only time you'd want to open the terminal to install something is when it's not available in Discover. So here I have Discover, okay, and this is the terminal window. Let's say I want to download something something simple. To do that, I type in sudo, which is stands for super user do, which means you're basically running things as administrator. Okay, VI Tetris, which is a terminal-based Tetris game. <laughs> Let's see if we can install this app. So uh, all we have to do now is type in sudo apt install VI Tetris. Awesome takes 154 kilobytes of disk space. It looks like it's connected. It's reading the database. Now it's installing. Let's run the app. So vi tetris. Tetris. Yes. Oh, excellent. Okay, so one player game, level zero, input setup. Looks good. This is cool. I like the animations. Okay. So control C will exit out of the game, but this is pretty cool that you can do this in Linux. Anyway, let's just clear the terminal and that's how you install applications. Uh, if I want to uninstall, let's, uh, it's, I believe it's sudo apt remove. Just change that and it will VI Tetris and anything VI Tetris installed. Okay? So now if I type in VI Tetris, what it should say is no such file or directory. So it was trying to start it up, but now it's gone. That's how you add and remove applications. Control shift, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Clear. One other thing, if you want to move a file. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a new text file and we're going to call it uh, wrong, wrong name .txt, right? So now we know that this is in our we know this is in our documents folder. It's very easy to look stuff up in Dolphin, but 
we're learning how to use the console, so we have to use the console. So, to figure out where to put this thing that says wrong name dot text, we're gonna have to go into our documents folder. So that's CD documents, and we're gonna list the files. Okay, so that's ls. So here we see wrong name dot text. If we want to rename this, all we have to type is nv, and we're going to type in quote. And then inside the quotes, w r o n g space n a m e dot t x t, and we want to say this is right name dot text. So this is actually, I know exactly what to do. Uh, we're gonna hit tilde slash r i g h t for right. And now, if you saw, it just blinked out of existence. But if I go to our home folder, all of a sudden, now it's in writename.txt. So it moved the file and it renamed it all in one operation. You can use this. It's very handy for if you need to rename files and your desktop is frozen, but you can access the terminal. That's how you would go about renaming your files. So yeah, that's pretty much how you use the terminal. It's not complicated. So that is essentially everything. You're pretty much golden when it comes to using the terminal in Linux. Let's empty the trash. Empty trash. Alright, so thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye!